Hi there, friends. Welcome to A Stamp in Peace. I'm Mary Nave coming to you live from Columbus, Ohio on February 1st, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Just checking to make sure I'm in the right place. Um, had a little technical glitch earlier today, but I think I got that all worked out thanks to demonstrator support. Um, so had been playing around with that and in fixing that problem that shut down my um, Facebook page altogether and I had to log back into Facebook, remember my password, that sort of thing. So um, a little bit of a, um, I don't know, scare. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm not real technical so when um, the internet and all that tech stuff is working great. It's my best friend and when it does it, I get nervous. So I'm happy to be here with you today. Um, I think you're going to really like today's projects. Let me just um, tell you a little bit about them. Uh, happy February, a new month. And I've decided that um, I've set a goal for myself for the next 14 days. And today is the first I hope, of a 14-day series um, called 14 Days of Love. So you will see the theme love throughout the next 14 posts on my blog. Um, some of them will include videos. Um, there may be a PDF tutorial. Um, and some will include the Facebook Live replays like today's post, um, which will go out later this evening. Um, I will repeat that theme throughout the next 14 days. However, it is not going to be all Valentine's Day. Um, some of the projects are certainly for Valentine's Day, but you can easily change them up for other holidays um, and occasions. And some of the projects or cards will just have to do with sharing love or expressions of love. It could be wedding, it could be anniversary, it could be um, friendship, okay? So I hope you will um, share this video and in addition that you'll be checking out my blog for the next 14 days, stampinpeace.com. And if you like what you see there, I'd ask that you uh, share that with your crafty friends as well. Now today's project I'm going to be using the Adoring Hearts Bundle. This includes a gorgeous stamp set and then a hybrid embossing folder. And we'll talk more about um, that in a little bit. And I'll even be using the hybrid embossing folder with its die today. In addition, we're using the square pillow boxes. I'm going to show you three different ways that you can decorate the pillow boxes with stamps and or paper. And um, I will let you know that the designer series paper I'm using is the most adored 12 by 12 specialty DSP that you can get free with a qualifying order of $50 or more in the US. And the um, bundle itself, Adoring Hearts, is $53. So if you like this and you like the paper, perfect. You can get that paper free. Um, I should mention too that the square pillow boxes are $8 and you get 10 of them. And they really are a nice size. So you can get quite a bit in there. Uh, larger than pillow boxes we've had in the past. So Let's get started. I'm going to flip my camera around now. And while I'm doing that, would you please share this live video and invite others to join us for today's creative inspiration.
And I just realized I had put my big stamp and cut and emboss machine away and that I am going to use it on the third pillow box I make. So I wanted to grab that real fast. Uh, okay, so as I said, we're using the square pillow boxes and I'm going to show you three different ways to decorate them. This first one, I'm decorating all with stamps, okay? And I'm just, let me slip my glasses back on. Now, before I start stamping this, I wanna give you a couple tips here. These are the adhesive. These peels off, peel off and expose the adhesive to put the pillow box together. I'm thinking, so the pillow box is here. I'm thinking, or the adhesive is here. I'm thinking of this space as the bottom of the box, making this space the top of the box. So that's why I have it angled this way because I am stamping some words, love you more. And that is from, I just had it here. That is from the Heartfelt Hellos stamp set, which is also a celebration freebie with a $50 order. But because this is the top, I want to be sure that I'm stamping that and what's around it in the correct direction. So this would be the top, and then these are the four sides that will be folding down. So on those, I want to make sure that I'm putting this so I can read it. Now I could just stamp randomly, and if you like that, by all means, please do that. Okay, so you can see my top and then my four sides. Now the rest doesn't matter quite as much, but I'm going to turn this around. And I have to think for a second, so that'll be the bottom. So I'll want it this way. And then this I'll just stamp kind of randomly. The bottom doesn't matter so much, okay? Let me move my Memento ink out of the way. Now, please note that this um, cardboard or cardstock, whatever you wanna call it, that is used to make the pillow boxes is kind of glossy and it's real smooth. So it will take time for the ink to dry. And you can even use your heat tool to speed up the drying time. But just so you know, I don't know if you can see that, but do some of the letters look kind of glossy to you? That means the ink is wet and they're still drying. I could have used black stays on, but I have to tell you, Momento is my go-to black. Um, I don't love stays on ink. I think Momento stamps better, but I do use stays on like if I'm watercoloring, something like that. Otherwise, I use Momento. It's just my, my favorite black, my go-to black. Then I took this little heart stamp from the Heartfelt Hexagon stamp set. And both of these coordinate with the Heartfelt Hexagon punch. Um, unfortunately, that punch is unavailable to order until about April 22nd. Hopefully it'll come in early. Sometimes things do. Um, but it is coming back if you've tried to order it or if you're looking to order it. So now I'm just going to stamp a variety of hearts all over. Oops, I gotta be, see, I have to be careful not to be getting my fingers um, in places where I don't really want the ink. Put this over here, I think. And I can turn this and kind of put my hearts around the sentiment. Whoops, didn't press evenly that time. 
And that's an easy fix if I'm using, if I have simple shape and it's a photopolymer stamp because I can see right through it. And I did it again. I guess I'm hurrying. So slow down, Mary, slow down. Again, this makes up the bottom of the box right here where the adhesive is. And I'd say that looks pretty good. So I'm going to stop there, put that out of the way. Now, if you want to speed up the drying time, which I'm going to do, try to be respectful of your time when you're watching, I'm going to use my heat tool to dry some of that ink. And you'll be able to see it dries pretty quickly for me. And it goes from a shiny, glossy look on those letters to a matte finish on the letters. So that's how I know the ink is dry. Now our water-based ink, that real red color, dried pretty much pretty quickly, right on the spot for the most part. But that black memento needs an extra bit of drying time or an extra little help from the heat tool. So your heat tool isn't just for heat embossing. You can use it as a method for drying as well. All right, now I want to show you how to fold these um, pillow boxes. They look like they might be intimidating, but they are not at all, not at all. So what I do is, and they're curved lines where they're scored. So I just kind of hold them like this and kind of pinch and turn or pinch and roll the box. Okay, I did not take off the adhesive backs just yet. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of pinch and roll. Highly technical term, right? <laughs> Have any of you purchased these square pillow boxes? I absolutely love them. The next thing I'm going to do, oops, make sure I do that back side. The next thing I'm going to do is peel away the adhesive backings and hold on to these because we are going to be using these in our third project today. And then I do one side at a time and I just kind of tuck that under I'm folding the box and then tucking the flap over it. And it works really pretty easily. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm bending over that flap with the adhesive and bending over the opposite one that will lay on top of it. And it's okay if you have a little gap that does not matter at all. So now you can see it can really hold a lot, like several um, chocolates, you maybe even a bracelet, um, little trinkets, all kinds of fun things. So now I'm just going to, and notice that I have the edges of the outside flaps towards the bottom. So I'm going to push the bottom flap in and then pull the other one on top to close it. And then it's really easy. You can make them all at once and you can fill them later or fill as you go. I'm just going to leave mine empty um, because I'll have to buy some treats to put in them or figure out what I'm doing. Now I'm just, and I could leave it just like this and it's pretty, just a stamped box, right? Just a stamped box but I am going to add a little bit of bling. I'm going to start by adding this 
black and white gingham, oops, black and white gingham bow. And you know how I like to do that. I just add it with a drop of glue. You can also use your mini glue dots. And then I'm just going to, oh, let me get a small block. I'm just gonna set this right on top. Oops, I think I moved it to dry. And then I've pulled out some of my basic rhinestone embellishments. And, you know, we have so many great embellishments. I actually forget to use my plain basic rhinestones sometimes, but I'm getting them out today. And let's see, I'm going to put one, one down here. These are, have three sizes for them which I like, small, medium, and large. So you can see the difference in all three sizes right there. Oh, good. And then let me add a couple more. Um, I think I'll go right here. And up here as well. And that's it. Voila, I'm done. Okay, simple, simple stamping, right? and then a tiny bit of embellishing. And that's all I needed to do to make a really pretty treat box or favor. Oops, one of those fell off the sheet. Um, think of this too. You could use something like this for a bridal shower or a wedding favor. You can change out the colors if you want, but just fun and easy, super cute. Okay, so let's move on to the second one. With the second one, I'm not going to stamp on it at all. So I'm going to start by folding on those curved score lines. Make sure you get all eight of those. Trust me, they come together easily. If I can do this, anybody can do this, okay? I'm going to then peel off the adhesive backing. I usually peel off both at the same time, but if you wanna do one and stick it and then peel the second and stick it, um, if that makes you feel more comfortable, you can certainly do that. So now I'm gonna fold that box. Seal that side, fold down the flap with the adhesive, and then fold the other one right on top. And then I can close up the end that I'm going to use to, um, which I'll use to put the treats or whatever I want in there. Now I've cut a piece of the, what did I call this? Adoring, most adored specialty DSP. It's specialty because the back of each of the sheets um, is white with gold metallic. That's what makes it special. But I'm going to wrap this around my box. Now I wanna give you this tip here. If this is gonna be the opening, I don't want to go across that opening with this. I want to go the other direction to make sure that opening is still um, unobstructed so I can put the treats in and so the person receiving it can open the box easily. So I'm gonna go this direction and I'm just gonna fold this over. Now this happens to be 12, um, 12 inch by two and a quarter. I just measured basically the width. It was a little more than two and a quarter, but I wanted some of the box to show on the strip. Now, I can make this work two inches, or two and a quarter by 12 inches, okay? If you want to cut it shorter, if it's easier for you to work with that way, or you have an idea of how you can, you know, maybe um, cut off an inch and a half or two inches and use that extra 
scrap for something, certainly can. I'm going to use my Stampin' Seal Plus. I love this for 3D projects. If you don't want to use this, I would suggest another strong adhesive like our Tear and Tape. Does everybody know what that is? This is the Tear and Tape. Or the Multi-Purpose Glue. Okay, so either of these three, any of these three adhesives will do. And I'm making this like a belly band. You can adhere it to the box if you want because it's not going to obstruct the opening. But I'm just adhering it on the one end like I would a belly band. Okay, so there's the box, super simple. Now let's decorate that up a little bit. I should move it up so it's even between the top and bottom. I can just slide that a little bit. So to decorate, I'm first going to stamp an image from the Adoring Hearts stamp set. This is the one. I'm going to stamp it in Smoky Slate. I wanted something that was kind of a subtle color, a light neutral, something that wouldn't be too, um, what do I wanna say, too bold, like a black. So that's why I'm using Smoky Slate. And now I'm going to color it in with some of my colored pencils. I'm using, to color, I'm using uh, Flirty Flamingo, which matches the DSP, Granny Apple Green, and Daffodil Delight. Of course, you can use any colors you like. There's these little things that to me look like um, buds. So I'm also gonna color those with the Flirty Flamingo. I have to say, this is the first project I've done where I've used my watercolor pencils for coloring on the glass mat, and I love it. Coloring on the glass mat, and I, I know these images are small, but I don't hardly see the um, pencil lines when I'm coloring. Of course, a lot of times I color in a circular motion, which helps also. But it's so easy to color on top of my glass mat. The Glass Mat Studio is um, part of our celebration joining offer. So if you purchase a starter kit, which I would love for you to do, and join my team, whether you want to build a business or not, it does not matter. You don't have to do classes or sell if you don't want to. You're welcome to join and enjoy the discount and the sense of community. And all of my team members have access, free access, to my class to go tutorials. Just an extra little perk I provide for you in addition to any perks Stampin' Up! gives. So again, this is the Granny Apple Green. Do not shy away from coloring with this stamp set because it's super easy. You can also color with the fine tip of your, um, I broke my tip there, the fine tip of your Stamp and write markers. I think these would be the two easiest. You could also try with the fine tip of Stampin' Blends. But for teeny tiny things like this, I really enjoy using the color pencils. You know, in the past, um, before this current annual catalog, we had two collections of watercolor pencils, Assortment 1 and Assortment 2. Assortment 2 is still available, but we have a new Assortment 1, okay? And that Assortment 1 includes some of the new colors Stampin' Up! added to our line um, 
with the current annual catalog. Now there are tiny little, I guess I'm calling on berries on here, and I'm just going over those. I'm just coloring a dot over those with my Daffodil Delight. And I like how that third color really makes everything pop. Just like that. And then I'm, oh, what I meant to say was, so these three colors are all, um, I believe the Flirty Flamingo and Granny Apple Green are in that assortment too. And Daffodil Delight is in the new assortment one. But I don't get rid of my um, old watercolor pencils. I keep them because you can use them way down. And I actually have extra sets for when I was doing in-person classes. So I've punched that with the two and a quarter inch circle. And then I'm going to mount it to Flirty Flamingo with the that I punched with the two and three eighths inch circle punch. Come on. Okay, I am going to add a tiny ribbon with metallic thread and I want to see if you choose the same color I did. So think gold or silver. Gold or silver, what little metallic bow would you add on this project? Gold or silver? I know which one I'm doing for this. <laughs> and I know which one I did for the sample. But I'm just curious if you would choose gold or silver. Any thoughts? Oh, come on, I'm sure you have some thoughts. Waiting patiently, but not hearing. Silver, silver. Okay, look at this. My sample I made with a little silver bow. For this one, just for all you gold lovers, this one, I'm going to change it up and use my gold metallic trim. You can find this trim in the annual catalog. You get a roll of each, gold and silver. And it seems to last forever. I guess because I only really use a little bit at a time. It's also great to use um, if you make tags, gift tags. And to add this, oh, this is, a, I think, a little bigger than I want it. Let me trim these again. I don't want it to overpower that pretty wreath or, or heart or the details of it. And now I'm going to add a drop of glue, my little bow trick, a drop of glue, and I'm going to lay the knot of my bow right on top of that glue and then hold it in place with a clear stamping block. So there's the second one. So now we've made two, showed you two different ways to decorate your box so far. And oops, I had a feeling that would happen when I moved it. There we go. You can also use a rolled up mini glue dot. Sometimes um, with the very tiny bows, I have a hard time hiding the glue dot, and that's why I use the multi-purpose glue. Now, remember on these first two, I said we're going to save <clears throat> the adhesive backs 
here's the reason why. And look at these measure about um, almost an one and three quarter by four inches. So what I've done is cut two one and three quarter inch strips from my, um, where's my pencil? From my designer series paper. And I'm simply going to trace on the back side. I'm going to trace these. This does, whoops, this does involve a little bit of fussy cutting, but it's easy fussy cutting. It's fast and easy fussy cutting. So do not shy away from this because it gives another great result, a great method for decorating the square pillow boxes. Now these adhesive ovals, I'll call them, are about a little less than four inches long, so I can get three on one of my strips. Again, I cut the strip one and three quarters wide, and then I just need one. I need a total of four of them. I just need one on that second strip. If you have some scraps large enough, you might be able to use those for this step. And now I simply am going to take my snips and cut these out. Turn them this way. And I'm just gonna cut right on the line. Quick and easy, no crazy little details to cut out. And because I traced on the back side of the DSP, I don't have to worry about um, erasing the pencil marks afterwards. Just makes me a little more efficient with my time by tracing on the back side. And because the back side of this DSP has a lot of white or a white background, it's very easy to see. And when I finish, I can even put a few of these adhesive backs in the, um, cello bag with the square pillow boxes in case I want extras or want to cut out the shapes before making the boxes. If you're doing several, it helps to have um, a few, especially if you're doing it as a group. Sometimes families get together and craft or girlfriends, demonstrators, um, we get together and craft together. And this way everybody has one to use, okay? So I'm gonna set these aside, or actually toss them out because I don't need them anymore. And what I'm going to do is adhere these to my box. I'm gonna keep my pillow box flat. Okay, I'm going to keep it flat. So for this, I'm going to use my multi-purpose glue, my liquid glue. And remember, I think of the space between the adhesive sides as being my bottom, okay? And then these 
three flaps are on the inside of my card, and it would be these four sides that are showing on the outside. And if this is the top, if, you're, if your DSP is, um, what do I say, non-directional, it doesn't matter. But if it is directional, and it's okay that I'm covering up that little um, notch. That really doesn't matter. But if your DSP is directional like mine, you want to kind of picture the box. And you're going to need to turn, as you would hear, the, your directional DSP to the four sides so that they all are going the correct direction when you assemble the box. You could even assemble the box first and then put these on if you just wanna be sure, um, but I think it's easy enough to remember. Okay, so that's what I have. So now I'm going to repeat the process of folding on all of those curved score lines. Remember with that multi-purpose glue, a little goes a long way. People don't, some people don't like it. They say it's too messy, it gets gunky, it seeps out, it gets all tacky on their uh, fingers and their work surface. And if that's the case, it's typically because they're using too much, okay? Typically, they're using too much. Oh, I think I missed this one. Okay, now we're ready to assemble that box. So I'm going to pull off those adhesive backings. And I'm going to fold the box. At this point, I always think of like a... Um, uh, what do I say? Like a fast food box, you know, something that your uh, Whopper Junior comes in or your Big Mac. Okay, I just said my favorites. I don't eat a lot of fast food, but at McDonald's and um, Burger King, that's what I like. <laughs> just like that. Okay, and then I'm folding in the bottom and then folding the top over for my opening. All right, and you can see, here's my top. I've got all my DSP going in the correct direction. All right, so let's finish this off. This is where I'm going to bring in my large stamp and cut and emboss machine. Oops. I've got a piece of six by six real red cardstock and I need the embossing folder. It's so fun. Look at this. It's so fun. And it's got this beautiful die set, but I'm just going to use this large die today. This, it was, is what makes this a hybrid embossing folder because it fits right in and you'll feel it slide into place, okay? And you'll feel when it fits, okay? Just like that. And then when you have it in there, it's not shifting. So I'm going to put my red cardstock over the top of the die and then close up my folder. Okay, this is what it looks like. So you can kind of get a picture of how it's going to come out. What is the number one rule for um, using embossing folders? Does anybody remember what is the number one rule when you're using embossing folders? I know some of you know this. It's that you put in the folded end of the embossing folder first. You want that folded end going in first, okay? If you don't, you can break that um, embossing folder. 
And I know that by experience. I did that many years ago. I even knew the rule, but I just wasn't paying attention. Um, and if it comes apart, totally apart, the embossing folder really just doesn't work as well, okay? So fold first, if you call it the spine, the fold, whatever you like. Just make sure that goes through your machine first, closed end first. Now look at this. I'll lift that out and look what happens. Look how nicely it cut. Everything just falls right out. I love that. Now, I'm only going to be using three of these hearts. There are three different designs. You get three of each. So I'm one, two, and three. I'm going to flip them over so you can see the embossed side. The other things I'm going to set aside, and I'm going to give you a hint. Oh, you call it the hinge, Natalie. Yes, that's another good way to define that. Um, you definitely want to check my blog tomorrow because I will have a post where I use this. Okay, so check back at stampinpeace.com tomorrow, the 2nd of February, to see what I do with this. And I'll also show you what I do with some of these hearts. That'll be the next day, the third, I believe. So now I'm going to use these to decorate my box. I'll be decorating the top. I flip them over. They look very much the same, but the one side, the back side is debossed. The other side is embossed, meaning um, the shapes are popping up. And I'm just going to arrange them like so. It's okay if they go beyond that curved edge on any of the sides. Just like that. Okay. But I'm not finished there. I used this die from that same set, okay, the same Adoring Hearts embossing, hybrid embossing set. Now notice it just cuts a solid shape. So it would be hard for me to stamp first and then die cut it because I wouldn't know where the stamping was. So I cut these out first, okay, and then the stamp actually has a curve in it already, and that curve fits right on that um, wavy or curved banner, okay? But I did that ahead of time because I knew that it could take a little extra time and um, I didn't want this live to go too long start losing people if they go too long. And I don't want to lose anybody. I'm just going to put it on like that. I'm letting it hang off the edge. Not necessarily centering it on any of the hearts or in the grouping. And then I decided it does need a little bit of bling. So I pulled out the pastel adhesive back sequence. I have to say, I love these gold sequins in here. They're like a matte gold or a brushed gold. Um, I love using those. So I'm just going to add some of these. I'll go like this. There's two sizes of each color. And then I'm going to add another one up in this corner. I'm going to leave it at that. So what do you think? What do you think? Super cute. And would you say easy? I would say all of these are easy. Okay. And again, just to remind you, I use the 
Adoring Hearts bundle, which includes the stamp set, the embossing folder, and the die set. It's a hybrid embossing folder, so you get all those pieces. Bundle is $53, so it's a great value. And then the designer series paper I used is a freebie that you can get with Celebration for a, an order of $50 in product, $50 or more. And the colors in here are Flirty Flamingo, Real Red, and Gold. So what do you think? Do you love these? Yes? Okay. Um, I don't have... I'm not going to send these because how do you send them, right? But let me see. Do I have something I could mail out? I bet I do. How about if I can find it here? Wait a second. I should have thought about this ahead of time, right? I'm so sorry. Okay, well, I'm not seeing it. Okay, well, I am going to send out a surprise embellishment to one person. Um, I must have, I got it out of my closet over there, so I must have left it on the table um, on my desk over there. But I will um, be sending out, and uh, it's a retired embellishment, but a great one nonetheless. Um, and it was a very popular one, I'll say. But I'll be sending that to one lucky winner. And um, let's see, if you want to have your name in the drawing, how about if, actually, let's do, yeah, let's do this one. Adoring Hearts. Adoring Hearts. If you'd like to have your name entered into the drawing to receive that surprise embellishment package, Simply type now, Adoring Hearts. Okay, put that in the comments, Adoring Hearts. And if you do that, your name goes into the drawing and I will pull for one lucky winner. Any questions on anything you've seen today? I'm gonna move my light and see if, oh, I don't like the way it, it's hard to get rid of that glare without taking the light totally off my workspace. Let's see if it's like that. It's still, I still see the glare and it gets darker. Okay, I wanted to try that while I was live, so thanks for bearing with me. All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Have a great weekend, and don't forget to check out stampinpeace.com because I will be posting through the weekend. So you don't want to miss those projects. Have a great day, um, and I will see you soon. Happy stamping.